This is Tom Gibbous, the voice of Shikamaru Nara from Naruto, and you are listening to ACMG Presents Talk Time Live, and it's not a drag. Previously on Talk Time Live Exclusive. How did you learn about the role of Shikamaru? Well, uh, there was an audition, and I think it was in like 2004, and just about everybody in town was going out for this audition. Wow. And uh, <clears throat> so I got a call, and I, you know, I can't, I couldn't tell you like, like, I don't really have an agent, believe it or not, mm-hmm. when it comes to voiceover work. It's it's more like whenever I work for one person or a director or a right. company, then they'll call me up and they'll say, hey, can you audition for this? And then that, that's kind of how it works. Right. For me, anyway. It, it's not true for everybody. Right. Um, uh, it's not from a lack of trying to get an agent. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, just in this particular area, this is um, – I, I, I don't really use an agent for it. But anyway, neither here nor there. Uh, so I got called in and they had me read uh, for three roles. I read for Naruto. Mm-hmm. I read for Shikamaru Nara and I read for Choji. Oh, wow. And um, and I thought of the three, I thought Choji was probably going to be my best chance. Mm-hmm. And uh, so when they called me and they said, hey, we'd like you to do Shikamaru Nara. I was like, wait, was that the cool guy? It's time. Talk time. Let's go. Anime, comics, movies, and games. The come on and let's get it. Talk time. Anime, comics, movies, and games. The come on and let's get it. Talk time. Anime, comics, movies, and games. The come on and let's get it. Talk time. Anime, comics, movies, and games. The come on and let's get it. Talk time. Live. Started in the 80s with Matt Cross. Dudes in the hood might have called that soft, but I carried that cross like Jesus did. Fast forward, I teach the kids to learn how to let go, live life, and show love to all things that don't matter. Where y'all from? And luckily, there's a show called Talk Time. We've been waiting for this for a long time. Dax kicks the facts on all the geek news. Special guests and unbiased reviews. Suburban kids, the hipster street dudes. All can learn something new. Me too. I heard words when no faith is empty. I stayed the course, so my haters tempt me. Beep the podcast, that'll make them envy. It ain't too trendy. It's ACMG. Anime, comics, movies, and games. The come on and let's get it. Talk time. Anime, comics, movies, and games. The come on. And let's get it. Talk time. Anime comics, movies and games. The come on and let's get it. Talk time. Anime comics, movies and games. The come on and let's get it. Talk time. Live. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is. ACMG presents Talk Time Live, the Prime Show. I am your host, Xavier Josiah. With me this weekend is a gentleman that I had a chance to meet uh, sometime back. What is it, like a few months now? <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. A few months now, um, we got to click in together, you know, to get together with my wife's uh, clients uh, gathering. And I don't know how we got to it, but, you know, ACMG is always around talking about <laughs> anything of this. And we got into the big discussion. A whole lot of us got into a big discussion about comic book movies as such and the comic book lore i was not expecting to come into this party <laughs> talking about <laughs> i'm ready to blend into anything and adapt to anything or any conversation yeah. but i was extremely happy to know that there was a crowd of people that was fans of yeah. the same thing i was so i was all in <laughs> well there was a moment there was a moment where like i i was kind of doing the same thing i tend to lay low at things like that right. or just you know kind of find the room and I was minding my own business, and all of a sudden, I saw my wife walking towards me, and she and she had this look on her face like, talk about something that you like to talk about. And right. she was like, you know, come over here, and we're, they're talking about comic book movies. I'm like, oh, no. Like, <laughs> they're going to make me do, like, performance art, where I have to be, like, the the guy that tap dances and, you know, says nerdy things about comic book movies. Like, oh, jeez. They're going to, like, make me, like, weigh in on this. And then I was like, oh, no, like, we're actually going to talk about this. Like, this is actually going to happen. Oh, so, yeah, this is in depth. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I was excited that it actually worked out. Yeah. So we decided to, like, get together because, uh, lo and behold, you're working on some uh, podcast projects yourself. So, first of all, ladies and gentlemen, welcome Joe Rinaldo, Rinaldi, actually, to the show. And, uh, Joe, what exactly are you going to be working on as far as podcasts uh, is concerned? So I am I am walking very much in your footsteps trying to, to take a page from your book. I'm just getting started. So I have two podcast projects right now. One is what is related to work. So mm-hmm. um, what I do in my day job is I consult with 
web design companies and help them learn how to sell better. I right. do biz, business development consulting. So I have a podcast that's that's re we're recording the first season now. We're going to drop like eight episodes. Mm -hmm. It's called All of the Fortune and Glory. And we are kind of, it's me and a, and a co-host, somebody I used to work with named Greg Story, yeah. figuring, you know, and just talking about that. Awesome. Beyond that, my little hobby podcast um, is Welcome to the Sixers, which is my <laughs> Philadelphia 76ers podcast, which is maybe the only thing that rivals my passion for uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe and comic book movies would be my my deep, deep love for the 76ers. Awesome. So, yeah, um, we we figured, like, let's get your feet wet in here. And first of all, you already passed on one thing, and that's the voice. You already had the voice. And not only you had the voice, you had the voice for sports. So that's nice. perfect. <laughs> Good. I, I'm glad to hear that. that that's validating. <laughs> You're like... It's like a step above Ray Romano. <laughs> Good. I'll take that. I'll take that. Legit. <laughs> but nonetheless, we're here to talk about the much anticipated premiere of Captain Marvel, and we're going to chime in and give our thoughts on that movie. Uh, the I guess this is what is this, the 18th installment of the Marvel movie right? now. Wow. I think you're probably right. 18, yeah, because I think in uh, Infinity Wars was 17. I remember last year when I was counting down i literally here's the thing um there was a there was like a challenge online mm. that came out where somebody figured out that if you watch every marvel movie from 2007 iron man mm. and at, at, at in january it'll lead up to infinity wars and damn if it didn't do that i watched no, that's awesome. one movie like, chronologically not like in the order that it should be but i watched okay. every movie you know, dating back to the first one to all the way up to Infinity Wars and it met everyone. It wasn't easy because a part of me upon watching all of those movies, I wanted to I wanted to speed up and watch, but I had to be patient mm. and I couldn't do the binge thing. Mm -hmm. So I had to mm -hmm. do it every once a week and, re and and discover these movies again. It was painstakingly awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> to say the That's least. great. Yeah, I, I remember seeing something online about being able to to, to kind of work your way up to it. And I think there was another one that was like on a longer timeline. Mm -hmm. They tried to do the same thing, same kind of schedule, yeah. and then slice kind of Captain Marvel into the schedule uh, so that you wind up at Endgame. Right. So similar concept, but I I've not I've not I, done I, it. I'm not doing it again. I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Too much. That was, I, I'm really happy that I did it before. And not only did I do it, I also added some of the. TV episodes that were connected mm. to that. So, like, you had Ages of Shield, which was connected to um, Winter Soldier. Um, you had some Thor. Um, what was it? The Dark World episodes mm. from that show, and some mm. th other things that connected. It was like it was really. Uh, what was it uh, Agent Carter as well? I like. I really went down. I doubled down. No, that's those awesome. Things. So that's really cool. <laughs> so, but we're here to talk about that in our talk topic of the week. So we're going to be doing that. But of course, before that, we got some news to talk about in the world of ACMG. But before I do that, I just want to say thank you to Felix Dongato, who is the one of the hottest, you know, underground rappers out there right now. Uh, just, you know, hot off the Grammys and everything. He got a new album coming out in April, but he was here to interview and talk about that. Here's a funny thing. Um, you may not know the name, Joe, but this mm -hmm. guy, you know, the name of a particular character, Felix the Cat. Mm, yes, this guy is a hip hop artist. He's been out for for quite a while in the underground game, and mm. uh, he has a really great following. But the significance of that, he uses Felix the Cat for his, you know, for his uh, theme, for his gimmick, if mm. you will, and his name. But there's a deeper connection. Apparently, his grandmother is the original artist and writer of the original song for Felix oh, the wow. Cat in 1919. <laughs> oh wow that's way back and yeah it is way back and he's continuing the heritage and this album that uh i got a chance to uh get early it's so awesome like even if you're not a hip-hop fan i think you would appreciate this from a standpoint like there's some things he there's some dedications to the music that his grandmother made and he sampled mm. in and it's really awesome so shout out to him and he he was a great deal and also you you heard a clip of this on the beginning of this episode not you but the uh, listeners right now mm -hmm. but tom gibbis who is shikamaru from the ever popular legendary anime series naruto was on the show this week did a great interview with him and uh thank him again for being on the show and you heard the sound bite and such and everything here too as well it, it, he was really awesome he was absolutely a uh, awesome 
uh, guest to have on, and I will definitely have him on again. But again, we got some news to talk about in, uh, in our favorite fandom, so let's not waste any time. Let's find out what's new in the world of ACMG. And now it's time to find out what's new in the world of ACMG. All right, Joe. So you like Rush Hour? I love Rush Hour. I love Chris Tucker. Yeah, I, I like, both. I lo- love them both. They yeah. they did their thing, but as all things, you got to end sometime. You gotta, you know, you gotta hang it up. These guys are. I mean, you've seen. I don't know. If I have. I've seen Chris Tucker. I know he looks. I know Black doesn't crack, but um, bones do. <laughs> so I don't think he's gonna be doing another rush hour anytime soon. Jackie Chan. Um, he's talk about everything cracked with him. He's he's. Not, yeah. I, don't, I doubt if he's doing anything else. He did that. I still have not seen that last movie that he did, which was like a serious um, film. Mm-hmm. It, mm-hmm. Yep. 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 Yeah, I've never. I still have not seen. It. I gotta go out of my way to see it now that I'm thinking about that. That looked awesome. Did you get a chance to see that movie? I did not. I did not. But I, I, I hear what you're saying though. Like, I mean, he was Jackie Chan had to have been almost 50 when the first Rush Hour came right. out. Like he was at the like the end of his career, kind of physically at that point. Yeah, so Rumble he's got to. Was a long time ago. <laughs> right. I mean, he's got to be pushing 70 by now. So he, I mean, and, and, and the toll his body has taken is is I mean, outrageous. We, yeah, we've seen the outtakes and everything. Those those things are yeah. brutal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> brutal. no, but I love the first rush hour. I mean, between all the and it was like the perfect combination. There was like the the rumble in the Bronx was like the appetizer. And then rush hour was like Jackie Chan in an American movie with a with a decent sized budget doing his insane stunts. Right. And then Tucker was like right off of Friday. Mm-hmm. And, you know, basically, you well, could actually just off, the fifth element, off of the fifth element, oh, actually. Fifth element too. Yeah, yeah, all good. I mean, like. There was that weird movie he made with Charlie Sheen. I forget the name of that, but like, oh, I remember he had like that. a yeah, he had like a run of like three or four movies where they just like let Chris Tucker be Chris Tucker in his Chris Tucker voice, and <laughs> you know that was just like an amazing combination in in, in, in like totally underappreciated action movie. Right now, they have made an attempt to make mm. a TV version of this. I don't know if you realize or remember. Uh, uh, back no, in, I don't. Okay. Yeah, in 2016, CPS tried to redo. Um, try to rehash the whole entire thing and uh, do a TV version. It did not last long, and that's why you probably don't know about it. Okay. It did, okay. The ratings were very low. They, it didn't work at all. Uh, people wasn't feeling it unless it was the initial two. Right. So at, with that said, you would think they would just hang it up, just let it go. No. Hollywood <laughs> is doing it again. They got the reboot bug. So they now there's been an announcement that a reboot is in, is possibly in the works according to uh, an article on movieweb.com. Mm. Are you, first of all, before I even announce who they might mm. be picking to do this reboot, are you in a mood to see a reboot? I I guess. I mean, I think that the original concept of, like, those kinds of Eastern stunt Jackie Chan style, mm-hmm. you know, kung fu movie for a modern era like i could see that i could see getting excited about that kind of of stunt choreography and all that and then if you put that if you root that in some kind of american story with you know a partner yeah i think that could work i, I mean that's that's what i loved about the original one was it made the the kind of you know kung fu tropes very approachable right. for an american for a western audience so i mean I, I don't think it's you know to me it's not such a precious piece of filmmaking that you can't remake it i loved it but i think like i'd be down for a remake or a reboot if if they had the right people and the right kind of director okay i can't speak for the director right now but the names the names that they're picking right now are female names are you ready Uh for that oh cool no i I would i'd be definitely into that that's awesome all right so bet the names that they're picking for this reboot Mm -hmm. and I when if they're gonna go the female route, and I already thought about the minute that I heard the female route come in, I mm. know who they're picking. They pick Tiffany Haddish to be yeah. to take the Tucker part, and I'm yeah, like, if you're yeah, gonna yeah. do it, you can't go any better than her. Now, as soon as you said that there was gonna be a female recasting, like I'm like, <laughs> who is going to be the like the the absolute like razor wit? And it was like Tiffany Haddish. Like that's like she's the right person at the right time. Exactly. Um, yeah. They also. 
uh, have somebody by the name of Bing Bing Lee, uh, who mm. apparently is a very famous actress in uh, China. And mm. she's been on a movie, The Meg. I haven't seen that movie before. I did not get a chance to watch that movie, but uh, she is very attractive. And mm. I, I believe, like, she's not ugly. <laughs> mm. And I is believe, she like a martial artist by trade? I'm assuming if she's taken on that particular role, she damn sure better. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I'm assuming, because you got some yeah. big shoes to fill. Yeah, like, no kidding. If you if you remember, Jackie Chan's an Oscar. He has, he has an Oscar now, so it's like, mm. you know, you got some big shoes to fill with that one. At, yep, at, I, at I think the, the magic is going to be whoever they get to direct it, right? Like, if That's they can... That's what it comes down to. Right. Like if they can orchestrate, like let Tiffany Haddish improvise as much as she needs to yeah. to get to, you know, the really crazy stuff she can get to. Yeah. But then at the same time, have like the the talent to, to weave in all the, the martial arts choreography like yeah. that. That's like it's almost like um, a combination of like a music video and a movie and, you know, all those kinds of elements, if you can yeah. pull those things together. Now, here's the thing. Do you get a female director for this particular movie or you uh, get a male or do you get both to try to chime in, get a little bit of, you know, the feel of both, you know, get the female aspect yeah. of it, but also kind of, or just, you know, get the right person, which could be female and she understands the situation and she can handle it. I mean, it's, that's yeah. going to be the situation there. I, I, I'd be more I'd be inclined to go with like a female comedy director because yeah. I think like the the harder I don't, I don't mean to diminish the martial arts part of it, but I mm -hmm. feel like the harder part tends to be the comedy people. Yeah. People that direct comedies, giving comedians enough space to really like go nuts and and, you know, find ways to improvise and, you know, give them like 15 takes to say 15 different things and, you know, get the funniest kind of reaction to things. So if you get like. You know, a female comedy director, a female comedian who's ready to direct, somebody like that that, like, you know, comes from whatever, like right. one of those improv backgrounds. Right. Like, you know, you've, like, I don't know that the Kristen Wiig is a, as a director, but somebody that, like, has her pedigree in yeah. improv comedy, put them in this. And then I think if you partner them with, like, male or female, whatever, like a really, really talented stunt coordinator. Somebody that has, has or people that have been involved with the first movie, too, who gets the understanding. Maybe, of yeah, yeah. Something like that. I think yeah. that's like that. I, I don't know. I feel like you see a lot of comedies fall flat and it's when it's a someone who doesn't get comedians often is the person directing. I'll that. give you a great example of that because I'm glad you said that. And I agree with you because mm. I don't know if you've ever watched Eddie Murphy's uh, classic Boomerang. Oh, I love Boomerang. Right. So I don't know if you realize that BET came out along with Holly Berry mm. uh, and I, for I forgot her, the other um writer's name because i like her work she's been on a lot of great movies and tv mm. shows uh that I, I think she was a masters of uh none as well mm. with uh Arcees. i think she's been she has been on that show she is on that show too um but uh they decided to redo boomerang in a episodic you know per, uh, ah. but it's based on the next generation all the kids of Marcus Graham and uh, okay. all of the up, so it's had that. What is lacking? What is absolutely lacking here is that they're actors. They're all actors. They're yeah. not comedians. Yeah. And the the music element, which was done by Babyface, is not there. Mm. It's so, I mean, mm. but it's weird because Holly Berry is kind of the uh, showrunner, I believe, mm -hmm. of this mm -hmm. series, mm. and it kind of it's it's a great show if it's not called Boomerang. Yeah, well, I think Boomerang is a good example of that, right? Like Boomerang yeah. was like Eddie Murphy, Martin Lawrence, David Allen Greer, like Comedians. put them in a room and just let them like, I'm sure half of the stuff that made the final cut in there was them just being in the moment, messing yeah. around the, 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 the father. With Especially the, in that gym scene. <laughs> oh, and, and then the father with coordinating the, yeah. the liner of his jacket and all that. Yeah, like, <laughs> oh, my God, like all of that is just so authentic. Like, you know, they just like gave them room and they. And they made that in the moment, kind of. So like, I think that's yeah another did, example of if I did the tasters, if I did like the Folgers or Tasters Choice test to you and didn't tell you what this show was, and then yeah. I revealed the show, you would be shocked to, be, to know that it was Boomerang. Yeah, well, I think it's like <laughs> of all the people that were involved in that first movie, 
Halle Berry is the one that's not a comedian. Like or Robin Givens. Like, what do they mean? There's like exactly. two people in that movie that, that weren't comedians at the heart of it. And they're the ones running the show. Like, not only I don't that, know. What if at the moment, Martin Lawrence ran it? Well, that's the thing. At the moment, yeah. there's no – and that's the other thing. They're, they, they've they mentioned the names of the characters in the, mm. in, from the movie, but they haven't shown up. Eddie is not expected to appear on this movie. Sure. And no. that's the right – like – he had the only thing that he the only credit he gets for this show is that it's his creation It's based on characters okay. that he created. That's it. Yeah. Other yeah. than that, it's just like, what are they doing? Yeah. Well, and I think, too, as much as as much as I loved Boomerang in its time, I also feel like Boomerang is one of those 90s movies that when you watch it now, I haven't watched it in a long time, mm-hmm. but. I would imagine that some of the themes of that movie do not hold up well to well, from a, from a, modern I, sensibility. Yeah, I don't know yeah, from yeah, an like, idea, ideology standpoint, yeah. but maybe some like – I got to watch it too because last time I did yeah. watch it was a few years ago, and it, I it, I still loved it. It was still funny. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know in a sense if I watched Trading Places, how uh, outdated it is because of yeah, the settings yeah, yeah. and such. But yeah, yeah. Um, no, it was definitely an awesome movie and a great setting, but there, there was so much combinations of why that movie was great, and Boomerang didn't hit it. <laughs> for me so i'm yeah. hoping yeah. i'm hoping that rush hour does well i'm yeah. rooting for it to do well i don't care as much that it is a female base because you know there's people out there that is going to be you know bitching and moaning about it being yeah, a yeah, female yeah. base but i can say in in reference because of my experience with boomerang i wish that they would just sometimes leave these intellectual properties alone and just try to create something a little bit new yeah Instead, I mean, we'll see what they do. I, I love that they're paying respects to it. I love that they're doing giving it a female aspect. But at the same time, I'm like, how about just create something brand new? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's there's a lot of that going around, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's, like yeah. reboots to me. Like, when, when was the last time we seen a new Matrix? You know, to that extent, mm. and, and, and something mm-hmm. of that original. I mean, Battle Angel Alita. I don't know if you've seen that movie. That was awesome. Mm-hmm. And I haven't and, seen it. It, I highly recommend you go see it. Yeah. It's based on an anime and a manga. Yeah, yeah. Um, but had that movie been out like at ninety nine and ninety eight before all this Marvel stuff came out, this mm-hmm. that movie that movie would have been revolutionary. Mm. It would have set the tone for so much mm. right now. But because there's so much going on with all the all of the Marvel movies becoming a new western. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. You know, it, it's going to be a cult classic. I could definitely there. Um. Energy, you know. Speaking of um, changes, you heard about that Will Smith won't be in the uh, Suicide Squad, and they're you know changing it over. Uh, I did hear about that. I I knew. I, I made this prediction. Uh, uh, the minute that I heard that he was falling out, and everybody started. Oh, yeah. I started, you know, on our ACMG Facebook group, started putting okay. out there like, who should be the one? And I immediately oh. thought Idris Elba. <laughs> it was, oh my god! <laughs> I am so on board for Idris Elba. Like. <laughs> it's like it's an upgrade in my opinion. Yeah, like, many have said from, that. That's I oh agree. my god. I agree. Yeah, he's more. I think he's more dead shot than Will Smith. Is nothing. I I I think I can speak for a lot of people when I say it's taking nothing away from what Will Smith has done. But yeah, I think Idris Elba will play Deadpool. I mean, dead shot on the new um, uh, Hobbs and uh, Shaw movie <laughs> coming up. We'll oh, get yeah. to see what he's made of. Yeah. No, I mean. Idris Elba just like Will Smith is a leading man. Like Will Smith is like a charming kind of leading man type no in his in his, you know, overall catalog of movies. Mm-hmm. Idris Elba is like deeply, deeply charismatic. Like Idris Elba has like a like a, a just a, a raw kind of charm to him that's very different that is I think better suited for like, you know, an anti hero kind of character like Agreed. Deadshot. Yeah. Absolutely agree. So I'm looking definitely forward to that uh, yeah. as well. So we'll see. Um, and of course, James Woods is going to be uh, directing that because I think and that talk about upgrades. I think the quality of that film will be James they, Gunn. I mean James Gunn. I said James Woods. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. 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 <laughs> yeah. James Gunn's James Gunn will be. Um, I always think I do get that mixed up every time I mention him. <laughs> <laughs> it's so crazy. They do kind of yeah. look like too when you really think about it. <laughs> you really I was just I was watching uh Guardians of the Galaxy last night right. just to, after after getting home from Captain Marvel and yeah. was reminded of how amazing of a director James Gunn is. Yeah, I think cuz you know everybody knew it wasn't no secret that uh 
Suicide Squad, the original movie, was trying to get any type of rub from what they were doing with that movie. They tried to do all of the same formulas yeah. that they were doing. So now yeah. we're going to see, and this is going to test uh, Gun out to see, you know, what is going to be like outside of the realm of the MCU and then yeah. whether Marvel Studios may have made a, you know, a mistake in letting him go so easily. Yeah. So I yeah. mean, that's gonna be it's gonna be some interesting elements, and because uh, I I really didn't mind the Suicide Squad first movie. I, I'm not gonna say it was great by any mm. stretch, but it was just like it was just it's a Sunday nothing on watchable thing. That's, yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree. I think at best it's that. I thought it was like the it's a shame the trailer for it that was like scored to the Queen song. Yeah, exactly. Maybe the best trailer ever, and yeah. and I was so like up for this movie before it came out, and then it was, it it lacked it lacked the kind of um, clarity and vision and and like overall kind of direction that somebody like James Gunn brought to Guardians. So yeah. hopefully he can do it again. I, I tell agree. you what, I hope James Gunn actually tells them to change Killer Croc because mm. he he his the, the cosmetic. Mm. makeup of him was so disappointing mm. i need them to go cgi with him <laughs> i don't know why they decided not to do that and make him look like the koopa uh one of the koopa uh characters from uh the mario brothers movie that came out years ago <laughs> it's so awful i was like that's, <laughs> that's so hard to look at and he then he was skin and bones too i was like no this is mm. just no for this mm. so um <laughs> let's talk about some really unfortunate sad news i actually talked about this with tom uh give us our guest um, on on an exclusive because he had a connection to the nine oh mm. original nine oh two one oh and that's Luke Perry passing away untimely mm -hmm. this week. Um I I'm not gonna front. I watched the first few seasons of that show like everybody mm. else and uh he was the one of the cool dudes out of that show. Dylan was Dylan was iconic, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um I don't know if you have ever watched the series but you had to know Luke Perry. What are your thoughts on that? Actually, yeah, the, the it's funny you mentioned the fifth element because that's probably one of my favorite parts he played was was that like short part he plays in the yeah. very beginning of Fifth Element. Um, yeah, I mean, he you can't argue with the fact that he was like an icon. Like mm -hmm. he was just a style kind of personality icon in in the mid '90s. Yeah, like very very few people, and and you know, in a time prior to the internet when the world was much smaller and there were fewer celebrities to even be aware of. No you know, TMZ. He, yeah, like, and he, just, he commanded a lot more market share as a yeah. result, right? Like he was he was on television when there were only, you know, a dozen or so television 3, networks. 6, 10, 29. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> right. Exactly. 17. Exactly. Um, 57. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I think like, I mean, even as someone, I was like – the wrong age for 90210 somehow like i think i was like maybe a little older when it yeah. came out and and my younger sister might have been into it more but right, right. like i was you couldn't help but be aware of how massively popular he was i mean and it, i don't think people i don't think the kids today really understand like he was mega popular yeah. i can't compare yeah. him to anybody today that would probably rival with him and jason Priestley, just as heartthrob you yeah, know, they were the last of the heartthrobs because I don't know. I, well, like, I don't know anybody who could be considered that label anymore. I don't think that label even exists anymore. <laughs> I, if, I don't know how many white guys in the 90s <laughs> like me grew sideburns because <laughs> Luke Perry like popularized sideburns again. Like that was a whole thing. He, like, brought, he brought back the James Dean essence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's and and you know, well, I was shocked. Like I, I, I missed actually the news previously that he'd had a stroke a few days before and was right. and was and people were worried about him. Like so, when he when I saw the news that he had actually passed away, I was completely unfamiliar with the circumstances, yeah. and it seemed even more sudden. But I mean, he was in his fifties. Yeah. Well, not only that, but he honestly, I I watch Riverdale, which is like the Archie uh, right series. Right. Very popular series, man. I mean, yeah. It's 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 huge, uh, in essence, and it's all done by the same people. Uh, the guys who do all of the arrows and flash and all that. Mm -hmm. Greg Belanti is amazing. His production is amazing, doing all these uh, comic related shows, and he plays Archie's father. So you know, I watched him on a normal basis. He, there was mm -hmm. never any signs of this guy yeah. being unhealthy or whatnot, and, and such. It's, it's amazing. And even still, like he was on this week's episode. Uh, oh, well. Yeah, it was it was 
it was hard to it was kind of hard to watch, but they did do a dedication to him. They, you okay. know, they posted up a quick, you know, thank you, Luke, uh, rest mm. in peace, you know, uh, video shot of that. And uh, yeah, it was uh, even then it was just like you would never even fathom. Mm. It's surreal. It was just like yeah. for that, but only it was just so many. A lot of other people were getting strokes this week there, and that was King Kong Bundy passed away uh the same yeah. thing um yep. there so many other people that were just passing away yeah with strokes it's just crazy i'm it's scary yeah. <laughs> it's very scary it very i mean 50 years old like something like that like that's just like that he had like you know 30 more years in front of him that, yeah. that you know that's just yeah it was really really tragic and the word around you know hollywood and everything and from people that have ever met him or there was never mm. a bad thing that's ever been said about him too so i mean Ah, that's yeah. Whew, it, it's crazy. Yeah. I, I believe the um, the actor who plays Archie has still not spoken out yet because oh, he, wow. you know, he he worked really, you know, close with him. Mm. You know, went together. Um, Jason Priestley just recently finally said something because they worked together for almost like over a decade on mm-hmm. that show, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. they've been really cool with each other. So you know, rest yeah. in peace to him, and uh, you know, hearts, yeah. thoughts, and prayers to the family. And, and which, by the way, his son. I don't know if you know, his son actually is a professional wrestler. Oh, I didn't know that. Jesus, really? Yeah, well, par- apparently Luke Perry is a huge professional wrestling fan. And oh, he, wow. I'm a, I watch wrestling. So, I, you know, he apparently he actually um, has been seen everywhere his son has uh, wrestled and supported his son, you know, throughout. Oh, that's wild. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. It is. But, uh, yeah, I, I, it always burns me when people die too young. Yeah. With that said, he left a legacy that will last for quite a while. So in some cases, um, he, there's some immortality within him. Yeah. Three years to come. Yeah. That. Yeah. You know, so uh, last bit of news I do have. And um, I know you told me that you don't watch any of the CW shows, but I can tell you as a comic book fan or a comic book movie fan, mm-hmm. I would definitely tell you you should invest. I mean, I believe in being I believe in uh, the art of late blooming. Because <laughs> I did so with Breaking Bad, and oh, okay. I, I kicked myself after <laughs> watching that in Sons of Anarchy. And so, um, but I enjoyed it nonetheless. But I can tell you, man, Arrow has mm. been the front runner for not just all of the other comic book TV shows, the CW in general. Mm-hmm. Because if not for the success of Arrow, again, uh, Greg Belanti Productions, the guy is like the J.J. Abrams of CW. <laughs> he, almost virtually every major popular show that's on a CW network is done by him. Mm. Um, and then he also transitions over to Netflix because he does the Sabrina uh, series as well, which is connect, which is a spinoff to Riverdale, mm. too. And uh, he also, if you own the DC Universe uh, app as well, uh, he does the he, he's doing Doom Patrol. He does um, Titans as well. I mean, wow. this guy is. They are relying so much on this guy. He is paid. Wow. No, that's wild. <laughs> but he's a phenomenal writer. And mm. he started the first one he did was Arrow. Mm. Now in its seventh season right now. That mm. should tell you enough. Uh, but it was just announced that, you know, Stephen Amell himself, who plays uh, Oliver Queen, a.k.a. Arrow, has announced on social media that they're going to that they him and Belanti and uh, others have discussed moving on. Uh, which means that Arrow will be ending on its final season with only 10 episodes at that, too. Mm. And uh, I tell you, man, it's it's amazing. And, and you know what? I don't mind because it's lasted for so long. Yeah. Um, and he saw he thought that at least he's run his course with the series. And when I saw the video of him announcing it, he, he was very emotional, of course, about it. He spent out his entire career banked mm. on this role. <laughs> mm-hmm. His career yeah. was made from this role. Yeah. Uh, we didn't know who Stephen Amell was until this role. Mm. And, you know, he figured, like, he could move on. This series would still go because it was kind of leading off where there's some new people taking over the helm of Arrow. Oh, and, okay. And, no, they just decided they're going to end the series instead and just okay. give it 10 episodes. But also, they're, the other th- reason why I say watch not just the series, The Flash, Legends of Tomorrow, um, Black Lightning, which is now on, is that they're mm. doing a – they do crossover episodes. Yeah. And they do the same formula – as Marvel, like, I don't understand why DC Films didn't go about it the same way Marvel did, because it would have made themselves so easier, uh, yeah. their lives so much easier just trying to go that way, but they tried to do their own formula and it didn't work. 
And well, it, I read that uh, they were going to do a Crisis on Infinite Earths storyline. Have they yeah. done that yet? No. What they did so far – all right. So they had – this will be the third crossover that they've done. They did one crossover, okay. which um, somehow merged Supergirl right. into the world of, um, of you know, Arrow and uh, the Flash and such because they're in two different Earths. Okay. And Supergirl's in another Earth, and they're in another Earth, but they can, you know, tra- you know, they can dimensionally travel to each okay. other's realm with ease now because of you know Star Labs technology. So, okay. but last year was Crisis on Earth X, which was absolutely phenomenal. There was some. Okay. I mean, if you ever watched Transformers the movie in in eighty four, that's really I can only <laughs> compare it to. It was it was mm. really that perfect of a balance where. You had action, you had heartfelt character development, and then you had surprises and tragedy. Mm. Unsuspecting tragedy in there, mm. which changed the dynamic of everything that went on to every show that they made. And was mm. done so well. So now, yeah, uh, with the new... Um, actually, no, this might be their... This No, I'm sorry. This is their fourth crossover. Because okay. Elseworld was last year. Okay. Elseworld was just... Un- like... This, these shows do no wrong. <laughs> Just yeah. So, well, and, that, that I'll have to check out. Like, yeah. Crisis and Infinite Earths was the comic book that got yeah. me into comic this books was when their, I was a this kid. This was their Infinity Gauntlet before Infinity Gauntlet. Yeah, no kidding, right? That's, that's, <laughs> I, I didn't think about putting it that way. That's exactly right. Yeah, so I, I will definitely check that out for sure when that comes around. We've watched – I've watched a little Supergirl with my daughter. Yeah. She likes it very much. My son's watched The Flash. Mm-hmm. Um so like I I've, I've seen like bits and pieces. I just haven't taken the plunge yet. But I can tell you I this. I'll, I'll um, definitely take a crack at it when when crisis happens. Here's the thing. I and and if you get hooked on that, that's going to make yeah. you that's going to force you to go back to everything yeah. when it started because there was so much the connection, Marvel like connection to everything on in there. It just it they've done such a great job in doing it. And then the budget. Mm. I can't even tell you how in the hell they can afford to do the CGI in these yeah. shows that they're doing, especially with the Flash? Um, this week alone, when they had King Shark and uh, and uh, Killer Grodd, and mm. and they're fighting together, and as you just have this, what Deadpool says, ultimate CGI battle scene <laughs> <laughs> that was unbelievable, and on, on like primetime TV. So yeah, um, it's gonna be. You know, I've resp- I. Things don't last forever. Not everything's supernatural, and I still don't understand how the hell that show is still around. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's a good run. They, it, that's a hell of a run. It's st- like it's not stopping. This is like, this is their version of The Simpsons, <laughs> in this case. <laughs> but it's going to happen, and uh, I, there's many that is speculating or believing that uh, Oliver's going to die in Crisis on Infinite Earth. Oh, wow! Like, but Superman is uh, Superman is does exist in this. Is Superman and Supergirl exist. In this, um, in this, uh, in this world that they created, mm-hmm. as well as the Flash. So if I I'd never read Crisis on Infinite Earth, but I do, I should really go back and read this because I heard there was so many mm-hmm. major developments with this. But with all of the prime people in this series, and they're, and they're actually going to do this, it's and I, it's going to be amazing to see how they rewrite or what they do because I don't think mm-hmm. they're going to do everything that's been done on that book. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think if they're they can't hold too true to the uh, the storyline there if they want to keep those other shows running. Yeah, so we'll yeah. see. I'm looking forward to it. They never done wrong, and I expect a major, major conclusion to the uh, Arrow series. So I mean, I wish it well. It was, but I can always go back on uh, Netflix and binge it or whatever they're gonna have it in and binge it again. It was, mm-hmm. I can tell you, um, Arrow and, and Arrow came off right at the cuffs of Christopher Nolan's Batman trilogy. Mm-hmm. So what happened was is that like Greg Belanti, you know, kind of took essence of what they got from there and did Arrow. And the first season was like really grabbing you in, in a, in a sense, um, and it answered all the questions, did everything that's that uh, what was a Smallville did not do. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I love Smallville up until a certain amount of seasons and they should it, they should have stopped a long time ago. But Arrow <laughs> corrected all of those and just with a bigger production and everything, too. So it was really awesome that they did that. So we'll see. But, folks, that will do it for this edition of What's New in the World of ACMG. We're going to take a break. Come back and review the much-anticipated next edition of Marvel Studios. Uh, I was about to say Black Lightning. <laughs> Captain Marvel. <laughs> we'll do that right after this. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this is Dax Xavier Josiah, the host of ACMG Presents Talk Time Live, the podcast. You want to catch up with all of our podcast shows and hear from some of the hottest names in all of anime, comics, movies, and games, such as... This is Miley Flanagan, the voice of Naruto. This is Stephanie Shea, the voice of Sailor Moon. This is Ruben Langdon, the voice of Ken Masters and Dante from Devil May Cry. Hey there, this is Kyle Abair, the voice of Ryu from Street Fighter V. This is Chris Battle, character designer of Teen Titans Go! Here's your chance to check out all of that and more on Talk Time Live. Live.com. TalkTimeLive.com provides all of our ACMG content with new and previous episodes, exclusive interviews, articles, and much more. Visit TalkTimeLive.com and let us help you learn to let go, live life, and love all things ACMG. Talk Time Live. Hi guys, this is Ruben Langdon. You're listening to ACMG Presents Talk Time Live. Show you can do it. And now, it's time for our Talk Topic of the Week. Ready? Point! All right, folks, we are back with our Talk Topic of the Week, and it is our review of Captain Marvel, the much-anticipated, and first, if, to my knowledge, I believe, the first female-starred Marvel film that they've mm-hmm. had. And I, I thought, I almost swore that they were going to beat Wonder Woman out, but they didn't. <laughs> but nonetheless, doesn't matter. Both great movies, and we're going to talk about it right here. <laughs> uh, first of all, before I do that, I want to give a shout out to uh, all of the uh, ACMG members that joined me last night. My wife and I uh, over at Flower Town Movie t- uh, Tavern. And uh, shout out to Craig, Joey, Jessica I, Jessica R. Yes, two Jessicas. <laughs> Darnell, Stephanie, and Jen, and along with their friends and family as well. It was really cool. We had a great time, great food. Uh, Nobody slept on a recliner seat, so that was great. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, we had a great time, and thanks Movie Tavern, because, they, you know, they always do it best. We kind of, that's our new blockbuster spot for movies now. So, <laughs> which um, theater did you go, by the way? I went to the Grant Plaza. Which uh, one is that? Is that AMC, United Artists? Yeah, uh, it's, a, it's United Artists. Okay, the IMAX, yeah. pretty much. Uh, we, it was just a regular. We, we decided to buy our tickets kind of late, so we wound up seeing uh, like a pretty traditional regular screening on a on a smaller screen. Right. Hey, yep. where, wherever you could get it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we were we had like kind of slept on it a little bit, and then decided spur of the moment to go yesterday. So gotcha. we were we were glad to see it on opening weekend, though. Yeah, it was it was awesome, and, and I, you know, I never dawned on me that they, they the promotional marketing aspect, mm. uh, the PR aspect that they put it out. On uh, International Women's Day. Oh uh, yeah, that, I I didn't put that together either until afterwards. That's pretty well. well unfortunately, we're men, so we don't think like that. So. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> but yeah. but no, that was I, that you couldn't have planned it a lot any better. It was awesome that they did it, and Marvel did it again. Um, you know, and reportedly from the how to, from according to the Hollywood Reporter, uh, just announced that uh, Captain Marvel uh, made sixty one point uh, four million. On Friday, with an expected 155 to 60, 160 million this weekend, mm-hmm. I call that a win. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a big open. Yeah, it definitely was. So let's get let's get down to it. Uh, Joe, what was your uh, overall thoughts of uh, Captain Marvel? I liked it. I, I I liked it. I thought it was a good Marvel movie. I didn't think it was one of the best Marvel movies, so right. I may be um, alone in that kind of reaction. Um, I was trying to think of like. Where I tend to like rank the Marvel movies, I can't help it, and I tend to kind of. No, no, it, we all movies. we all do that. And in fact, okay. every all time right. we review a Marvel movie, we got to it, It's going yeah. to be ranked. It, it's inevitable. <laughs> yeah. So I thought I thought it was good. I mean, my family liked it. So like you know, looking at it from others' perspectives as well, including my eight-year-old daughter, you know, who has a very different perspective on things. Everyone, <laughs> my two sons, my wife, my daughter, all left the theater very happy and yeah. and enjoyed it very much. I thought it was good. I thought it was like I would compare it to kind of in the same um, same kind of quality of Marvel movie as Ant-Man and yeah. Doctor Strange yeah. and maybe the first Captain America, which I also really like. Like, I like all of those movies, too. I, I, my, my upper echelon, like, Marvel movies would be, like, Thor Ragnarok yeah. and uh, the original Avengers. And yeah. there, there's a couple I, – I, there's, like, a top, like, five or six or seven that I think are pretty untouchable. I, I would say that Captain Marvel fell outside of – that upper echelon for me, but it certainly wasn't, you know, one of the more like forgettable or middling Marvel movies, mm-hmm. like, 
you know, the second Thor movie or the first Thor movie or, you know, <laughs> some of those others. I thought which, they weren't had, bad, like, which weren't bad, but they were too Thor. Yeah. They were too much yeah, Thorian. Yeah. And I say, yeah, and I yeah. say that in a way, like, if you ever read the comic books, you, like, it's it had the same pacing and... and yeah. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> Only yeah, a Thor I, I fan think, can love it. <laughs> yeah, and I think that, like, my biggest issue with Captain Marvel was that overall, I thought that it was a little flat. And I, and I think... For me, it felt consistent, so I think it was not an actor's mm-hmm. fault. Like I thought Brie Larson was great. I yeah. thought that like there were sequences where she really like chewed up the scenery. That that one fight scene where she's being held captive by the scrolls and has her kind of hands in those kind of gauntlets and can't use her powers. Oh, yeah, and she's yeah. just beating the hell out of people with her bare feet. Like <laughs> that that there and, and she like screams at that one guy during the fight. Like there's a lot of just, like, <laughs> Yeah, that was really cool. <laughs> oh, a lot of like a lot of energy and a lot of fun in that. I thought yeah. that like some of the character moments were really a little flat for me. And I, I I felt like I have to kind of lay this to the feet of the fact that it was maybe directed by two people. Like mm-hmm. I think that's kind of a messy situation. And and like Doctor Strange, like Captain Amer- America: First Avenger, like Ant Man, you know, this was also directed by somebody that I don't really have much awareness of and the stuff that they did previously wasn't exactly stand out like the 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 marvel movies that i love tend to be authored by like their best directors like ryan coogler and james gunn and you know the the rousseaus Rousseaus and and joss whedon like Mm -hmm. there are there are directors who wrap their arms around these movies and like drag them to the finish line with this this like bulletproof vision of what they want it to be and like Spider-Man Homecoming like these movies are yeah. like artfully constructed and then when you have movies that are directed by people that that aren't as like accomplished or don't have as much on their you know resume as some of these other folks do like you know Doctor Strange like Captain America like I don't know I just felt like this was a little bit more in that category of mm-hmm. the lighter moments weren't as good as they can be like when when she meets up with Monica Rambeau after not be seeing her in six years. And they thought she was dead. Like there's just like a, a visceral kind of passion in that scene that wasn't there that I was looking for. Like they should have been like really like a lot of emotions and, and shock. And it just seemed like very kind of flat line. And, and so did a lot of other things throughout. So I thought like, I wish they had done more with the '90s stuff. I wish they had had like yeah, I was. I, you're right. I was expecting a little bit more '90s nostalgia in there, and they kind of that's yeah. yeah. I, you're right. I, you're right. That's something I didn't really point out because they we kept hearing stories about what the setting and base was going to be. Yeah, yeah. So they yeah. really didn't capitalize, but only on the music as the timeline for what's going on, but not anything yeah. that really resembled the '90s. Like, they we did didn't such see a great grunge. job with the blockbuster store. Like I thought, like there's so much more material they could have gotten out of that concept. <laughs> you know, like I think they could have, like some of the Marvel characters are alive in the mid '90s. Like yeah. Tony Stark is probably, you know, in his early 20s, and and you know might have been on the cover of a magazine at that point. Like I think they could have like given us a peek into the grander Marvel universe in some ways. And I think they could have like done more of the blockbuster stuff. Like it was amazing to see that, that like completely thoughtfully reconstructed radio shack and blockbuster. Like not only just that I can, I can actually add on to that. Maybe some of the clothing. I mean, cause she had, yeah. nine, she had a nine inch nail shirt yeah. um, and stuff like that, but there was so much and the more flannel. Like, yeah. yeah. And the flannel, the grunge yeah. look yeah. Um, also should have played in. I'm um, like, you know, yeah. for my culture, people were wearing extremely huge clothing. Oh my God! Where was like the eight ball jacket? The eight like, ball jacket, stuff like that. Yeah, none of that was in there. Yeah, yeah. None of that and was in there. It was just the night. <laughs> and I love the music. Oh, my one complaint about the music, and it's a small complaint, mm. but I I think they had an opportunity to make it all female nineties music, uh, which would have been awesome. And they snuck like two REM songs and a Nirvana song in there, but yeah. everything else was female artists. Like, why not just like lean into that and make it just consistently all female artists. Like when they played that whole song at the end, I was like, yes, like this yeah. is like awesome. Like live through this is, is one of my all time favorite albums of, of all time. Right. Um, but I thought like there was 
a little bit more. I would I would have, I wish they had just done a little bit more to like ground the movie in the 1990s. You know, yeah. make it apparent that it's not easy just to use your cell phone to get information you need. Like <laughs> they had her with the map, which was great. But I thought yeah. like I just wanted more of that. And I well, and they I did have did the internet to... cafe, so I'll give them credit for that. And, that and the great. fact that you were loading in time. So good. <laughs> also so good. good. <laughs> they were using Alta Vista for search. Yeah. Like. So good. Like there was lots of little stuff like that. I I just I think they did a good job with what they had. I yeah. craved a lot more. I just wanted more of that. Like I, I understand. Just pile the '90s off. Yeah, I understand it. No, honestly, I, I there's a lot of to what you said. I agree with. Um, what did you think? What was your overall kind of assessment from like the the big picture? The overall assessment, I do agree with you from a from a perspective of comparing it to the movies that you mentioned, the Doctor Strange, the okay. Iron, the uh, Ant Man, and because. <laughs> This was another side story. You know, if you read any big sagas to any, um, you know, comic books, whether it be Marvel Mm -hmm. or DC, there was always those side story crossovers that you would buy that connects everything to what's going on. And -hmm. that's what this was. Yeah. And with that said, yeah, would I compare it to any of the really top billing ones that the main event ones that you mentioned? No, you can't. It stood on its own as a great, fun, quality movie. Mm-hmm. But in in essence of that, in, in essence of that, yeah, I agree. Um, I would say it. I don't want to say it fell through. I don't want to say it fell through. But no, no, I, I don't, do. I, agree. I do agree that it could have done more. Yeah, it could. I, I, that's more. how I feel. But yeah. it, this is a first introduction of her. Mm-hmm. And for what they did, they did made her the mission accomplished. They made her a badass. She was definitely a badass. Yeah. Um, Brie Larson. You, I mean, if anybody's read Carol Dan- uh, Danvers mm-hmm. in the comics, she is a hard nosed militant type of person. Yeah, who, you know, you know, very demanding. You know, mm-hmm. a, you know, much of like much much of of an authority figure, and she played that really well. And I think mm-hmm. it, it has room to grow mm-hmm. as time goes by. And of course, that was when she first started, so she couldn't have done everything she could have learning about everything that she did at the time. Yeah. So I did appreciate, and I had to take into consideration that this is just the beginning, you know, origin of what's going to happen down the line when we get to yeah. Endgame. So we should be mm-hmm. seeing a much more established version of herself once we get to that level. So yeah. with that said, yeah, it's not going to compare to any of the, like, the Infinity Wars or, like you mm-hmm. said, it's, uh, definitely a Homecoming. But I base it on it just standing on its own for what it is. So, yeah, mm-hmm. if it's... It's barely. I think for me, it's going to barely make the top ten. Right. If I go back, that's where I have it. Yeah. If it's, I think it's going to be far closer to ten than it is to one. And I got to look back at all of the (laughs) seventeen. Yeah. (laughs) To see where the eighteen comes in, but I think it's barely going to make it in. But with that said, I enjoyed the hell out of it. It was a lot of fun. We laughed in there. Um, There were a lot of great moments in there as well, which we'll talk about in in due time. But. Let's talk about the standout performances. Which performances stood out to you the most in this movie? I, I thought Samuel L. Jackson did a great job. I thought that, <laughs> like, just the 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 nuance of him being younger in his career, him being more optimistic, not as charismatic. Like, <laughs> yeah, and, and not as like jaded as he is later. Like, no. you know, you the 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 Nick Fury you get in like. Winter Soldier is like a man who has lived like a hard career and comes out the other side, like, you know, all rough edges. And like the way he like carries on about the cat and it's so like unguarded in how much he loves this little kit, this little cat. And like there's just a a, a, it was really cool that he didn't play modern Nick Fury in this role that takes place 30 years ago. He played a he's trying to believe what he see at the moment. He's early shield. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, it was great. I thought he was great. I, I really I loved like every minute he was on screen. I thought was great. I also loved. Uh, I was shocked. I was shocked at how this this uh, really interesting take they took with the scrolls, making them sympathetic. How about like, that? And uh, yeah, completely not ready for that. And I thought that the guy from what um, a twist. <laughs> yeah, the, the the guy from what do you call it? From the Force Awakens, um, uh, ben, or no, from Rogue ben One, Middleson. From Rogue One, Ben Middleton. Ben Middleton. I thought yeah. was really like really good like he was covered in makeup and you could barely see his face but Mm -hmm. despite that like really got a lot of character out of him and i thought there was a lot of um you know sympathy for him and his family and like his whole race and all that like i thought i thought that was also 
really interesting. And then the last thing I'll say was I, I really liked the um, – the sequence with her and Jude Law and their like squadron of three <laughs> soldiers. I thought I, I could watch like another movie about the about six or seven yeah. of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought they were awesome. I absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. Yeah. Um. Without saying Brie Larson, you know she. You had to. I, I yeah. always say this one about all the movies. The lead character has to knock it out, and if yeah. if they're not knocking it out, we're not going to have a good show. <laughs> yeah. Agree. 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 Said. I mean, she. I think. For me, from when I read the comics that I've read with her, mm-hmm. I she she embraced the character really well. Mm-hmm. I th- especially, I, I it, it it left room for development of her character <laughs> down the line to be a more stern, controlled of her powers and everything. Be it, you know who she is, mm-hmm. and I loved loved every minute of her. I. She really embraced uh, Carol Danvers in this movie. Samuel L. Jackson, the two-eyed Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, yeah, again, yeah. Was, again, great. I love, yeah, like you said, I love the, you know, this is the way he was, you know. Yeah. You know, fresh baby face version, not knowing what he's going to be going through down the line, yeah. you know, to, to this realm. And, yeah, I, I agree. Ben Middleson, uh, ben Middleson like you said, uh, as Talos, uh, mm-hmm. really he had a more sympathetic tone of him and charismatic mm-hmm. very charismatic mm-hmm. and, and it made sense because if anybody i haven't heard anybody mention or complain about it but you know there's probably going to be somebody who's going to p- complain about something on the internet mm. but if you remember the scrolls from whether it be the an, you know animated series like fantastic four or mm. the comic books you're expecting to have this gritty you know yeah. creepy type of you know that's where you came in as but they're always the villain. They are always, They're always, the always villain. consistently the villain in here, all of those other formats. But here we have a more humanized version yeah. of these, the, these, um, of this race. But it makes sense because they've been in Earth. Their whole entire being is about adapting, because yeah. of their, uh, their, uh, they are able to change and 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 uh, morph into these different, you know, human beings or whatever like that, and and copy them. So you would six. They have to copy the ideology. They have to copy the pers- uh, the personalities and everything as well. So they get the gist of how to be in in in, in Earth. So it made sense to me, and I like the way that he he performed so well in this. And like you said, became more empath- sympathetic a character that we were expecting in here. Yeah, Jude, yeah. Jude Law playing as uh, Young Rock as well. Uh, we didn't yeah. know we didn't know what his real role was because a lot of people was expecting he was going to be Marvel. Right, right, right. Not yep. being the case later on, and I'll talk about that in our favorite significant moments as well. Okay. And everybody, uh-huh. I thought he did really well. He did great. Um, you know, uh, Doctor Watson really filled out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah. Well, you can tell when people make a Marvel money, they get in Marvel shape. <laughs> yeah, totally. Was, yeah, they do. Totally. They got rocked up. Yeah. Yeah, Annette Benning actually is, uh, you know, supreme uh, intelligence. In yeah. Her, which, c- correct me if I'm wrong. She was also Marvel, right? And she just took yeah. – that was the, both the same person, if I'm correct. Yep. And I don't think that woman has aged in like 20 years. Well, you got it. All right, wait. She looks fantastic. All right. All right. Like, have you seen her outside? Because I haven't seen her outside of this movie. In a while. Oh, no. That's a good point. I haven't seen her like <laughs> – but I, I think like – I mean if they were going to – I think I have a pretty good eye for when Would they try to clean someone her? up with CGI. I mean you can see it with, with – Samuel L. Like they're, they're, the the technology is amazing now, is. but even with that, mm-hmm. like with uh, Michelle Pfeiffer and Ant Man and Wasp and oh stuff, my God, there's yeah. a there's like a smoothness to the skin that is a dead giveaway. Like yeah. they're the skin that they put on these folks does not have Michelle pores Pfeiffer in it looks or phenomenal, by the way. Let's add that to it. Yeah, Michelle I haven't Pfeiffer. seen her in years, and then I saw in Ant Man, she looked phenomenal, even without the CGI. It was like wow. yeah, 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 yeah. And she's like, and she's like. Maybe the first like leading actress I ever had like a crush on as a child. Like she goes way back, I mean, Michelle Pfeiffer. She's Pfeiffer's. the greatest Catwoman of all time. I can't. Yes, there's, no, yes, yeah. there's no argument. <laughs> no, but I thought I thought that Benning was great. So yeah, she played both mm-hmm. Marvel, and then because that was who, um, Cap for who Brie Larson's character, Captain Marvel's character. I, I don't know what to call her, like Veer or call her whatever. But Veer's yeah. like because she was the person that was most important to her. That's who she saw the supreme intelligence right, as exactly. when she interacted with it so Which she was both sense like at the end of the movie when you start seeing it when you start connecting everything together yeah and it's so like annette benning essentially played both like obi-wan kenobi and yes. kind of the emperor in in like the same movie <laughs> you're she right was like ultimate <laughs> like guru and then she was like the ultimate bad guy both parts it was pretty great you're right now i this is one of my favorite because i love this show and i'm looking very forward to the show coming back this summer seeing clark Gregg 
reprise his mm. role as uh, Agent Carlson. <laughs> yeah. The glue that tied all this together, first of all. Yeah. And seeing yeah. how he and, and Fury really connected together. Yeah. It made me so happy because I don't know if you've watched. Do you watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. at all? I've watched it a little bit. I, I haven't watched like consistently, but I've uh, like picked good episodes that people recommended to me. Man, I tell you what, that, the first season was so slow and you had to really be a trooper. But right, <laughs> but when they got to the Winter Soldier movie and they connected it, it has been nonstop awesome from that point on. It went like from from five to a hundred. Yeah. <laughs> and and that, Clark Gregg is a great actor. He's like, phenomenal. He, he's, He's pretty much great in everything he's but in. I wanna, I wanna, and, and it was a good character moment. I, I agree. I thought like when he let Fury off the hook, yeah. that was like, oh, that's when they made up their bond. But, like, again, that's when they, but again, they went CGI on it, and you saw a younger version of him. <laughs> yeah. I thought like for some reason the, the later in the movie CGI was more successful than the early movie. In the early movie, he looked like – He'd had like Botox or something. Like he just looked like a little like wooden. But uh, but it was awesome to see him in this. And, and more I was hair like, too, you know, by the way. Yeah, like on like his first day of the job. That was great. Yeah. So I mean, he was always great. He's always great. And unfortunately, yeah. he, you know, I I, I don't want to say spoiler or anything, but you know, because that series has been out already. But he died in the yeah, last right. season. But he's coming back somehow. <laughs> in a new yeah, season. Yeah, I read that right. Like he's already. This is the second time for his character now. Yes. Coming Actually, back second, if you want to count it, it's like maybe third time. But this one is supposed to be – we don't know if it's really costing or not. So it's going to be weird to see okay. what's going to happen in this new season that's coming to summer. And they already been, um, they've already been uh, approved for a season after that. So that's awesome. Oh, cool. So, cool. yeah, I, it's, it's a great show. It's really, really great. Um, but, yeah, he was great in there too. Uh, Jamon uh, Hudson, uh, back as Karaf from Guardians of the Galaxy. Yep. I had no idea he was Kree. But that was also right, yeah. always awesome to see there too. Um and then we got the uh Rambo uh yeah. you know, ladies. You got um La uh Lashana Lynch as Maria, the mom, and then yep. Akira Akbar as Monica Rambert, who I all right, so here's the thing. I looked at my did my notes when I doing my notes, I uh, looked at um her part and looked for her name. It said Monica Rambeau age 11. And that was to me, I'm like, okay, why did they say that? So I had to look up and me being the Marvel person, I should have known this, but I, I stopped watching. I stopped actually reading after a certain point, but I don't know if you know, maybe some of our readers, our listeners know, uh, but Monica Rambeau is actually the character spectrum, which in the comic books is teamed up with blue Marvel, who is like, he's like one of the most powerful guys mm. in, in the Marvel universe. I, so, and wasn't the wasn't the mom's character also Photon in the comic books? I think you're right. She was, she was a Captain Marvel. Like that's yeah. And I don't know. Like I, obviously, I guess they're not going to go down that path in the movies. Well, but... I, well, that, well, here's the thing. I don't know yeah. if you remember, but Kevin Feige actually mm. said there is there will be definitely life after Endgame, after the phase and everything. So they're going right. to be doing, especially now with the new Fox merger. Right. They have the ability to create new intellectual properties or bring back a revamp and put a Band-Aid on some of the properties that Fox put in, including the Fantastic Four. <laughs> yeah, I'll be excited for that. Yeah, because, I mean, and, and take note, I love the original, not the original two, but the second generation to, uh, two movies that came out with the Silver Server. A lot of people were, like, getting on, like getting really like negative about the second movie only because mm -hmm. of the Galactus scene. But mm. if not for that Galactus scene, people would have said that movie was great because <laughs> mm. they, they were all about it until that scene. But um, and then there was the Fantastic Four movie after that. But yeah, which is With it was Michael B. Jordan. Yeah. And unfortunately, great actors, yeah. bad movie. Yeah. That, yeah. That's what it came out. I knew going into that movie was going to be bad. So I decided to take it with a Mystery Science 3000 perspective. Yeah, gotcha. yeah. <laughs> no. it's, it's, the guy who directed that was the guy who directed Chronicle, right? Yes. And it's a shame because Chronicle is amazing, and I amazing. feel like I feel like the studio got in his way and made a what could have been a movie, good movie but bad. All, but like, also, he's a good that He was very abusive to the uh, oh, cast oh, too. Really? So, oh yeah, it was a lot. It was a really a lot of things going. I it was more. Him, I think it was more him than the studios too. Oh Jesus! It was a little bit. Well, of I both, think but... the, my biggest complaint of Fantastic Four movies to date is I've never been satisfied with how any of them have treated the thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, someone's got to get it right. He's he's easily one of my favorite comic book character designs yeah. of all time, yeah. and such an iconic look. And I feel like no one's like embraced the fact 
that this is like a big, massive yeah. orange stone covered hulking thing. Like everybody's done like their own JV versions of it. I'm waiting for somebody to get the thing right. <laughs> well, I can always say this. If anybody complains about – they could complain about the recent one. I huh. defend the other two, but it, I will force anybody to watch the Roger Corman version at any time and oh, see yeah, how bad that version was. Yeah, that's bonkers. <laughs> it was, I can't sit yeah. through the first five minutes. I literally yeah. – I've tried so many times to watch that movie. After five minutes, I'm like, no, I'm done. I yeah, can't. No, no. <laughs> but, no one's um, to do that. Yeah, so, I mean, like, those are all the standout, you know, actors mm -hmm. and actresses to me. I thought everybody did a really great job. And, again, with each of them having their own toll, it brings a connection to what's going to happen, a prelude to maybe what we're expecting after the end game situation. But um, let's talk about some of the most significant moments. And I'll start with this. Sure. The logo opening dedicated to Stan Lee. <laughs> that was great. How, wait, all right, from from your perspective of your of the theater that you went to, how did your theater respond when they saw that? They did not respond. There was there was really? no real like now nah, like a lot of kids in my theater. Uh, it was like a one thirty showing. Um, so gotcha, gotcha. Uh, there was no like there wasn't an appropriate like reaction to the Stan Lee stuff that he right. would have gotten with like an older audience. Yeah, because um, people I, there was um, there was the female fans <laughs> that were like oh. <laughs> mm. And then at the end, it was like we just all decided to clap for it because it was yeah. when, when they when they went fade to black and they hit uh, thank you Stan. It was like yeah, that was really cool. I'm like, come on, man, you can't make me cry at the beginning of the scene. <laughs> <laughs> that was, you, I thought it was really appropriately done. What are you doing? And then yeah. followed by seeing, you know, of course, another cameo, which we're expecting to see more cameos down the line. Yeah, but seeing you know him in there in the train scene and uh, you know uh, Carol giving him that look, it was awesome. Yeah. Did you really see – I saw on Reddit. Did you see what Stan Lee was reading? That I was looking for, but I just I noticed that he was saying like true believers or reciting he was, something. So he was practicing his lines for the movie Mall Rats, which he appeared in in 1995. No way! Isn't that great? Th did Kevin Smith know this or <laughs> – So Kevin Smith has also like posted to Twitter like him, him – he's like in tears reacting to the fact that like it was his movie that got like – mentioned in in stanley's cameo that so is it, awesome because isn't that cool i remember i i listened um i did listen to his smart cast when stanley passed away because i and you, okay. they do have some significant connections yeah yeah um very significant connections and um yeah i i can only imagine how emotional he was and in fact he was but and he was talking about all of the things that he was going through when they did mall rats so that is really 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 yeah. great that is Absolutely great. I did not know that. That was really cool. Yep. So the other thing too, um, the I we talked about this a bit, but the origin of her getting powers was kind of an mm -hmm. interesting thing because I don't know if you mm -hmm. read the comic book version. No, I, I've not read the origin of of Captain Marvel in the comics. In the comic book version, to my knowledge, it was Marvel who did the blood transfusion. Okay. To, to Carol. Okay. And instead, it was in here in the in the Marvel set. And people got to understand. I can't stress this enough to all the comic book fans out there and all the new listeners here that are comic book fans. You got to understand something. This is called the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Ergo, this is not the six one six universe, which is the original comic book universe that everybody is trying to base mm -hmm. it off of. It is mm -hmm. loosely based off of that, meaning they can take from pay homage to those sources, yeah. but go into their own world. It's no yeah. different than going to the ultimate universe where Miles Morales lives at. And, yeah. you know, they have something different going on there. So this is what's yep. going on here. So with that said, they changed it to make Jan uh, Rugg, uh, Jude Law's character, to be the one that gave her the blood transfusion. But mm -hmm. she got her powers from this power reactor. Yeah. That was, like, powered by the... Uh... The Infinity Stone. Right. So originally on the yeah. comic books, I believe, like Marvel, who already had these type of powers that she had. Right. She, um, Marvel, the male version, gave her the rope right. to that too. So, and okay. speaking of Marvel, what did you think about Marvel being a uh, female character in here? I thought it was great. I thought it made sense that, like, I was trying to do the math behind, like, where that character, where Marvel comes from. Mm -hmm. Like, that's why I watched I, I tried to watch Guardians of the Galaxy last night to see mm. some of that like Cree side of the equation. Like yeah. you know, Ronin and the Cree and the Xandarians and all this, like yeah. what does that whole space opera look like? <laughs> and 
And I felt like it, making Marvel kind of a scientist instead of a superhero. Yeah. And making her like the whole reason she comes to Earth is because there is an infinity stone on Earth. Mm. And it's being held by the US military because they've like recovered it after the events of the first Captain America movie. Yeah. So, you know, the US government has this thing in its possession. So she goes under cover to basically, you know, infiltrate the air force so she can get her hands on this right. thing to build this engine that'll that'll save you know the scrolls from being persecuted by the Kree. so i thought right. like generally speaking once you divorce marvel from you know the captain marvel character from mm -hmm. like the 70s you know right. that original character i right. thought they had a lot of license to do whatever they wanted Absolutely. so you know making her more of a more of like a, a scientist type than a superhero type, I thought was a, an interesting and smart move. Yeah. And I think, you know, frankly, if you're going to have Brie Larson's character look up to and take direction from and be mentored by another character, I'd prefer if that was a female character. I like agree. I think it's more appropriate if she's, you know, her mentor, her Obi-Wan Kenobi is another strong female character. So I thought in this case, like, I agree with you. Like, I feel like the, 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 comic book continuity can be held kind of precious at certain moments yeah but at other times like frankly like who cares like you know <laughs> like in the grand scheme of things like nobody bought like these captain marvel comic books in the 70s where he died of cancer like right. that was like a whole different era that people don't have the same um emotional attachment to so i think they have a lot of license to do what they want to do there that should be a t-shirt in itself and, and at the end of the day who cares <laughs> yeah like it's like serve the story best and i thought that was, i thought they exactly. did I thought they made well said the story yeah so i mean yeah you had that and i what i loved about annette benning playing the marvel character too is that when she was the supreme intelligence version mm -hmm. the hairstyle i don't know if you realize oh, yeah. but the hairstyle kind of mimicked their original captain marvel and okay, just, yeah. Thought, that was just one of those little significant things that I love. I'm like, that's the actual kind of, that's, you know, I've seen artists draw Captain Marvel before. That's kind of in the realm of that type of hairstyle. Yeah. So I thought that was pretty cool. So, like, they didn't give her long hair or anything. They kept it short. So when you say Marvel, the hairstyle kind of was like, oh, okay, I, I get what they're doing here. Gotcha. I dig what they're doing here. That, that, Very cool. You know, see, and also, like, again, with the Monica uh, Rambeau, I, yeah, I was wondering, I was noticing that this little girl was uh -huh. getting so much exposure. Both of them, uh -huh. actually, the mom, too, uh -huh. was getting so much exposure. And I was like, what is the significance of this? Because she, right. she has some really cool moments. The, the, girl, yeah. the girl has some really cool moments. And she's kind of like the Disney-like uh, mascot character. Yeah, yeah. In a sense. Between her and, the, and, and, and Goose. <laughs> it was like yeah. it was yeah. like the ones that really, your good conscience right there. Right. Yeah. And stuff like that, which she helped bring the memory back for uh, Carol and stuff. So, mm. I, you know, when I found out that she had a bigger significance here and this is like, OK, mm. this they're setting they're planting the seeds for the future of Marvel. Yeah. Could right be other there. stuff for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Because at one point I didn't I knew she was just she was going to be in this movie. But I was like, if they call him Williams and it's found out as Riri Williams and it's like <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was going to go the Ironheart role or something like yeah. that, too. So it could have been uh -huh. any rate. But I'm digging with this going on and take note. This was in the 90s, and if you go back to now, she's probably in her 30s. During, I hadn't done that games. math. You're right. You're right. That's I, I hadn't. Even, I had not even thought about that. The fact that the mother would now be, you know, probably older. You yes. know, in her 50s, right? Mm -hmm. And then the daughter would probably be in her like late 30s. That's I had. I had not thought about that. So yeah, and 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 who's to know that we may see? I mean, with this. With in game being like three hours, who knows? They might slip her head. Yeah, out. no kidding. Who no knows? Kidding. But um, yeah, that and, and again, seeing Ronan and uh, Karoff, which is the connection to the Guardians of the Galaxy, was awesome. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Finding out that Carol was the, is the reason that Fury had the Tesseract, which led to the beginning yeah. of um, which uh, led to what was it Thor? What is it Thor that had no the was Avengers? It Captain, it was, uh, no, it was Captain America that had the Tesseract, and then led to it in Avengers. With it also right, it so really... Captain America had it, and then 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 in the events of this movie, Nick Fury gets his hands on it, and mm -hmm. then Fury has it in the beginning of Avengers. Correct. So I right. mean, it, I love. I, God, it's so it's it part genius and part like how did you not 
make this work? It's how how can you really yeah. mess this formula up? <laughs> it's, I love yeah. when they do this, and yeah. it, and it goes back when you watch all these eighteen uh, you know movies, and then some part with the you know Agents of Shield and the, yeah. now Cloak and Daggers and the Runaways and all this stuff. See how all this connects together, and then also to some extent the Netflix universe and and stuff mm-hmm. like that, and. It, it, it's just it's just awesome. It's just really yep. awesome. It keeps you in the realm for years to go, and it's just awesome. And then my final one is Goose. <laughs> yeah, that was that was well done. Yeah, I, I I did. I was like, you fell in love with this cat, which we found out it wasn't really a cat. Right. And then it just kind of freaked you out from that point, but it still yeah. became lovable. And some yeah. of the CGI scenes with the cat and like why this cat is following them in the space and following them everywhere they went. Yep. And, and then he ate the tesseract. I loved it, and I was like. I came home like I'm not looking at my cat the same way ever again. <laughs> Follow no me, almost in the same way that I don't drink tea anymore because I get out. <laughs> oh God, yeah. I don't blame you. It's so, I mean, so I mean, other than other than that, did you have any particular scenes that you loved on air too that really I, stuck out with you? The only little other thing I wanted to mention was there's a moment where the scrolls break into the Rambo house. Yeah. And they confront them and kind of tell their story. At, in that moment. Ben Middleton, Middleton is is drinking a soda out of a disposable kind of soda cup. <laughs> it is exactly the same soda cup that Samuel L. Drank, Jackson drinks out of in Pulp Fiction. <laughs> it's the same design Love cup. It. Drinking out of a straw the same way that Samuel L. Jackson is drinking out of it in Pulp Fiction when they when they he does the whole like, you know, biblical speech and all yeah. that. So I thought that was like that was very intentional. And if you're a Pulp Fiction lunatic like I am, like I <laughs> spotted that immediately. I loved it. Yeah, I love the Easter eggs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love it. And uh, so, I mean, what's only thing is left is pretty much the end credit scenes. And man, did yeah. they get, they give us something to you know yeah. count down to till end game? Yeah. We got to see it. We got to see that pager that we saw. Which I, by the way, I watched yep. in, uh, Infinity Wars right before. Yeah. Uh, I went to go to the movies to see this and, you know, mm-hmm. just, just to get that one scene. I didn't, I, I just like, let me just watch the whole thing and enjoy it. Yeah. But just to get to that end scene with, where he had the pager and I knew, mm-hmm. I knew I was waiting for what led up to this intergalactic looking pager, which, mm-hmm. which if you started realizing how she was able to hack into the pay phones oh, yeah. to get like the longest distance mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yep. that you ever yep. do, you knew yep. that it was kind of like, she's going to be able to fix up and give it. Yeah. She was the reason why he got the, um, the hacked version of the uh, yep. pager. And yep. lo and behold, we see, uh, we see the scene with, um, cap black widow. Mm-hmm. Ro- mm-hmm. Was it roadie or was it, um, roadie? Yeah. It, it was, was roadie. A war yeah. machine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah roadie <laughs> was in there in the room and they trying to figure out somehow, some way they found the pager yep. and, you know, and they, and they're powering up trying to see what happens and all of a sudden it stops and they're wondering why it stops in just seconds. Only seconds later, they turn around. Boom. Carol's right yeah. there with, um, a whole new badass looking suit yeah. and saying, where's fury in scene. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. I mean, I liked, <laughs> honestly, I liked that post credit scene maybe more than the movie that preceded it. It, it was um, awesome. It's almost, yeah. I almost kind of agree with you. It was, it was like, awesome. Oh, yeah. now, now business is just picked up. <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, I'm so ready for Endgame. It's ridiculous. Yeah. So getting something like that that felt like it advances the plot a little bit, you know, just kind of like moves the story forward a little bit, gives you a glimpse into the post-Infinity War reality. You know, yes. they're like – it starts out with them looking at those maps and they're seeing all of like the the – quantities of people that have like disappeared in other countries like and they're reacting to it so yeah it was just it was like more than i was expecting and hoping for frankly you know what i loved about that it's just the significance of that the few seconds that we got to see carol for that moment not just with yeah. the new the new almost like you, god the costume designers kudos yeah. to them first of all yeah um not only just with that but for that moment that little small minute moment yeah you got to see a much more established, empowering version oh, of yeah, the character yeah. that we've seen here. You could yeah. tell, like she just stepped up her game. The her presence just looked like ev- yeah. uh, evolution. Yep, <laughs> so, absolutely. Yeah, like the fact that like she she obviously got into that building somehow because mm-hmm. she's so powerful and like she's not even introducing herself or anything. Like the just first words fury. that were not where's fury like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she's she's not there to mess around. No, exactly, and that's yeah. that's going to be the Captain Marvel that a lot of fans know. 
Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, in the comic book, she is like, she's literally the leader of the Avengers to some extent. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you ever read, not the original, have you ever read the original Civil War comic? I did, yes. Many, many moons ago I read that, Have yes. you read the second? Uh, no. Now, I'm going to say, you're at a, this is the the best people to enjoy that mm-hmm. that saga are the people who haven't read it when it was out. And mm-hmm. I say this because they try. what they did was they, Marvel, Marvel, Studios is great. Marvel Comics still needs a lot of polishing up to do as far as writing because Mm -hmm. they are not writing as good as what DC has been doing. And I'm not a DC fan. I'm a Marvel fan. I can easily admit that DC is doing way better on the actual writing part of it, Mm -hmm. of their their deal. So basically what's happening is – they're trying to with, with Civil War II, which was a great, which was a great saga. It was a great story. Um, they did a Tar- Quentin Tarantino type of way of, of writing, mm. and instead of just going from start to finish, it was like finish first, middle. Uh, oh know, wow! You know, like the way they did with Kill Bill. Uh huh. But it, except they made it work in Kill Bill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 they tried yeah. to make it work in that way, and it didn't work out that way. But if you put it all together, it's an awesome story. But uh-huh. it was Carol. It was uh, it was Captain Marvel. You know, having rivalry with Iron Man about what they do with this inhuman, because he could tell the future, and they wanted to do a um, what is the movie where um, what is it? Priority Report. Um, Tom Cruise and they go in the future and they come back to you know arrest everybody. Minority Report. Minority Report. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they end up doing they using this uh, this inhuman who can see the future, and which means he can see crimes happening beforehand. And mm-hmm. he's already, you know, with that, they're arresting people without merit. Mm-hmm. And that was the big issue with Tony, because it's like, we can't tell if he's really, we don't know the just of everything that's going on and why it led to that before we could say uh, what's going to happen. And it became this big deal. And at this point, you know, Tony Stark died in all this. Right. At this point. So um, it was a great, it was a really, really great story. I, I, I He's never dead, by the way. I, I got to fix yeah. his back to life in some form or fashion. But, yeah. Um, but it was really, really well done once it was all put together mm-hmm. uh, and not in that order that they did. But she became a much more bigger spectrum, no pun, of the situation <laughs> and became a more demanding and empowering character within the Marvel uh, universe. And it was really cool to see that. So now I feel like we're getting to that point just from that little bit of what we saw right there. Right. So I'm looking forward. I'm very much looking forward to it. And and, and who knows, because we don't, we're in end game. We're expecting to maybe possibly say goodbye to some people. Yeah. I think that's almost inevitable at this point. Maybe a captain for a captain. (laughs) Who knows? Maybe. Yeah. 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 I think that seems likely. We'll we'll see. And uh, of course there was that one little scene with goose coughing out. Yeah. yeah. Which is always. Any, any cat owner can relate to that. My wife was cracking up at that scene. (laughs) Yeah. God bless him. <laughs> but overall, I, I, I enjoyed the movie. It's definitely a great Marvel movie. Not maybe not yeah. the best of the. Bunch. And certainly worth seeing on the big screen. Like the, the the spectacle of some of the battle scenes are really and cool to, I, to catch on the big screen. And dare I say, is Blu-ray Blu-ray worthy for those who collect Blu-rays? Yeah, I think it's something we'll wind up buying and and watching again and again. I think like if you want to compare it to all the other ones, it's not going to rank high. But I could say, yeah. just leave it on its own. It's a great movie. Yeah, I have it. I think it's certainly like it's up against tough competition when you put it against some of the other like major Marvel releases. But only certainly Marvel movies, because if you take it out in a realm, it's a great it's a better movie than a lot of other <laughs> movies. Yeah, if you're going to go see a movie on a Saturday, you could do a lot worse than seeing this. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah. Um, yeah. Joe, thank you so much for being a part of the show. I really appreciate My it. My pleasure, you've been, Dax. You've been awesome. <laughs> Thanks for having me, man. It's been awesome. It's been a lot of fun. Ladies and gentlemen, that will do it for this edition of Talk Time Live Prime. Uh, we'll be back next week. Well, I will be back next week for our Select Start video game series. And, again, as I mentioned last week, Ruben Langdon, who is the who's the voice of Dante from the new Devil May Cry 5 video game that just came out, which was absolutely awesome, will be on the show soon. Very Actually, probably sooner than later. Um, we did talk, and I'll, we're going to set up a time to be on and talk about this new uh, game that I will be reviewing next week. So stay tuned and get my thoughts on what I thought about that game and much, much more. So, Joe, thanks again. Uh, we, Endgame's coming. You, uh, game to, you down to come back? 
Oh, absolutely. I'd love to. That'd be awesome. Thank yeah, you. we got to do the major. We got to get we got to get the highlights of the major <laughs> one because yeah. we don't know Ugh. what the hell is going to happen. What's going to you know, it's oh, it's going to go down. Countdown begins yeah. right now. It and does. then um, Spider-Man's coming in July. So we got that one, too. So I'll be more yep. than, uh, welcome to, you know, stop on by to give your thoughts on that as well. That'd be awesome. Thanks, man. <laughs> no problem. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. On behalf of myself and Joe, all I got to say is learn to let go. Live life and love all things anime, comics, movies, and games. This is ACMG Presents Talk Time Live. We are out of here. People, have a great week. Take care. ACMG Presents Talk Time Live is brought to you in part by Viewfinders Identity Search and Design. Your choice for web design, graphic design, and all multimedia development needs. Visit VFISAD.com and let us bring your vision to reality.